About a year ago, I released a video showcasing how I size helmets for myself and for people who buy helmets from me. I also showcased a website I built uh, where I allow you to measure your head, then download a mock-up version of that head that you can use for scaling a helmet. Uh, that tool has its uses, but I've since developed a new one. Let's take a look at that one. So this is how it looks. It is uh, showing you a welcome screen, talks you a little bit, um, teaching you how to uh, do the measurements and where to take the measurements, shows you what you can do, and then a little bit more of how, what value you can get from this tool. So the first thing you see is a head, just a mesh, and you can turn it around, you can have it snap to positions, and if you want, you can change the mesh to a female mesh, or you can use the default one that I've used for quite a while. When you're here, you will adjust the size of the uh, head, will uh, adjust the width, adjust the depth of it, and you can also measure your the height of your head and then input that as well. When you're done with this, you can save the profile. And then whenever you do some changes, you will be able to get it back. You also have the option to download this as an STL file to use in Blender, if you so desire. The next step here that makes this tool a lot better is the ability to go to Helmet Fit and upload a helmet for yourself. Uh, let me find a helmet to upload. Let me just choose the male head, write in my measurements here, 145, 194, there we go. Then let's see if we can find a helmet that we want to print. I want to test this method out on. Okay, so I found the file I want to print, uh, but there's one issue with it. It's an STL file, as most files are, but the refmaker.app functions best with the 3MF. I'll show you why. So I'll go in here, I'll export it, uh, the helmet, as a 3MF file uh, and after we've done that we can drag it in to RefMaker and then uh, have it behave correctly or have the opportunities that uh, we want to, to exploit. So I jump over to Helmet Fit I drag the file over here and there we have it loaded. As you can see it comes in at a weird or wonky angle that might happen then just go to the fix orientation and then click around until it sits the way you want it to sit. When we're here we can position the helmet uh, up down or back to front, or we can tilt it a little bit if that makes more sense. For sizing it, we can use this little slider up here, but it's difficult to see if we are intersecting the head on top of the helmet. So what we can do there is we can go into section view, and then we have this nice view where we can see how much space we have to play with around the head. So moving this down a little bit, making sure that it sits where we want it to sit. You can see we have a little bit of um, penetration right there. We can see it also if we take this view. It is very, very little, but we'll uh, see if we can make it work. Make this a little bit bigger. 
let's try 97.5. Um, we can also do a top down view and see how everything fits. We can also switch from the um, perspective view to uh, uh, orthographic view. Uh, might make it a bit easier to see with the section view from the side, see how much room we have to play with. Um, but perspective is how we see with our eyes, basically. So this looks good. And since I have a 3MF file, I can use this ring view. This allows me to generate a slice of the helmet making sure that it will fit. So I can position this a little bit upwards, making sure I get a good indication of whether or not this will work. So when I'm here, I can download the size ring like that, and then I will print it. Additionally, if you have a helmet that is constricted in ways where you can't remove the back plate or uh, you have other consideration to take, you can make this uh, plate, this little slice of the helmet. You can add another one and then move it where you want, rotate it as you need and add some thickness to it if you need, if you want to have the opening of the helmet. Uh, printed and tested, you can do so here. Um, and you can have as many of these as you want and you'll, you can jump back and forth between them. But now let's print this size ring and see where we're at. For this project, I'll use one of my Bamboo Lab printers. Uh, I go here and I import the slice, the ring that I imported, uh, exported, sorry. I turn it 45 degrees just to get make sure that I have the space that I need. And for these parts, um, see that with these overhangs, it's probably best to print this upside down. It's no problem. And then to connect this, I usually just add a part, add a cube, um, move it around there. Scale it down, scale it down. Again, this doesn't have to be very precise. Um, and for a lot of helmets, this isn't really an issue. It's only where you have a separate floating part on the front, like with the Magneto helmet here, that this is an issue. Um, then I'll just... Ideally, I would make a curve out of this, but I'll just do it like this. It's best effort. When I'm going to print this, I will go at the extra draft. Just have this print get out there as soon as possible. This will take 24 minutes. Um, there is usually uh, not much to gain here, so this will this'll be fine using 10 grams of filament and I get a size ring that I can test. Uh, let's send this off to the printer and then let's see what we got. The ring is printed and uh, let's test it on. I can feel that this will be a tight fit, um, but it still fits over my ears. So I think I'll just go for it and it should fit. Worst case, it'll be uh, rubbing against my ear ears a little bit. The way I would fix that is either with some thin foam on the inside or wear a little cap or something to 
cover my ears so they don't rub on the raw plastic. But let's go back to the, to the computer and start a print. With the helmet fitting, um, at least as well as I care to do right now, it can probably do another iteration. In that case, just adjust the size and then print it again. But I'm happy with it as it is. We load it up in the slicer and as we looked at the screen from the ref maker, the size we went for was 80, uh, 97 and a half. So I'll just scale this to 97 and a half. Place it on I think this face. I think just for um, a little bit of bed adhesion, I'll just slice ever so slightly away at the bottom here. Zero point six percent gives me a nice base there and there. Uh, perform the cut. fix the errors. Uh, usually that uh, happens when the helmet has a lot of complicated geometry, like this one. For uh, ease of print, I'll rotate this 45 degrees and we should have the space for it right around there, I think. Yeah. I can even rotate it a little more. There we go. And then we'll add supports. Four ranks only. Crank this to 30-ish percent. And then fill in this. It's uh, important that it has a good addition on the bottom here, so I'll just crank it all the way up to make sure we cover everything. I think that's good enough. Go back to 20-ish percent. Take the top of the helmet just for support. And then of course this piece in the middle uh, needs some support. Can even put a little bit more here. So you can even go a little bit longer, a little bit more on these edges right here. These are fairly thin and they seem to have quite a steep overhang, like that. Make sure supports are generated, three, uh, three normal, then slice the plane and let's, let plate and let's see what we get out of this one. So there it's done, um, just going to do a quick visual inspection of the helmet, seeing if everything looks okay, everything seems fine, no blue overhangs, a bit overhang here, but that'll <coughs> be better once we slice it with a lower resolution, and I think I'll just off camera, change the resolution to this and then send it to the printer. And then I'll show you how it turns out. See you in a while. 
Okay, a quick little announcement while I'm waiting for this stabilize to finish rendering. I have a second channel called SideQuest Stories, where I talk to artists, alley people, cosplayers, makers and creative people in general. It will mean a lot of, uh, for me if you checked it out. Uh, link is up here. And uh, yeah, have a look, subscribe and let me know if you like what you see. Back to waiting. It's the next day and the print is done. So let's see how it uh, turned out. Looks really nice. Let's clean it up and let's test it. Looks like that was everything. There we go. It's about time to test it, so let's move the camera so you can see my head. There it is. Um, hopefully this will fit over my head now. I'm fairly certain that I have to take my glasses off. So let's do that first and then... I can feel it rubs my ears a little bit, but that will be fixed with just a bit, little bit of foam or maybe, maybe just a little headband. Otherwise, it fits fairly well. There's even room for a little bit of padding on top. Uh, let me get that. Here, I have a little padding bit that I use. So let's put that there. No. Let's do it the other way. Let's do it like this. I want it there. That fits very well. If you're looking to scale a helmet for your head, please have a look at RefMaker and uh, let me know what you think. That's all for this video. Uh, please give a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and please let me know if you have any comments about this tool. See you in the next video.